What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into normal maps. Now, in some of the previous videos, I've shown you guys how to create textures inside of your programs and export them as normal maps. Uh, I've also shown you how you can create normal maps inside of Photoshop. Uh, but there may be times in your design where you just need a little bit more than what these programs are giving you. And that's where hand drawing your normal maps can really come in handy. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining that process to you a little bit. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create your own hand drawn normal maps so that you can come up with some really cool designs of your own. So uh, that's what this video is going to be about. So anyways, let's go. To start this video off, I'm first going to begin by drawing a very simple pyramid design. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is what I want it to look like as it sticks out from the side of the body. Uh, so I'm going to start by just drawing out a very basic pyramid. Now keep in mind that I am using Inkscape for this, however you can do this in any program, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. So now as you can see, I've drawn out this very basic pyramid shape. The next thing I want to do is I want to color in each one of these sides using the corresponding colors on this diagram here. So first I'm going to start with this left hand side. I'm going to go to my fill and turn it on. And I'm just going to select this color right here. Then we're going to do the same here at the bottom. We're just going to select this purple color. Uh, we are going to select this pink right here for the right. And then of course, right here at the top, we are just going to make this one, this green color right here. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to turn off my, um, my stroke paint because I don't want these black lines running through my design. And now we have a very basic pyramid shape that we can play with on our normal map. Now, one thing to note here is that I used the corresponding colors based on the direction of this object here. If I were to project this onto a weapon right now, it would actually go inward into the body instead of protruding outward. Uh, that's because these colors are backwards here. So if I want this object to actually protrude out like this, I'm going to have to go in and do some reverse engineering. And there may be times in your design when you have to do this. When you get it in, you take a look at it on the weapon and you see that it's not right and you have to come back and switch some colors around. So real quickly, I'm going to do that with this object here. Now, if I bring this into my project, this will actually stand out from the body like this. So that's just something I wanted to make you guys aware of. The colors on this diagram are a little bit backwards. Uh, there may be times where you have to kind of come in and play around with these colors to get it exactly the way that you want. So the next thing I want to talk about in this video are the angles that we have on this object here. Now, if you notice from the first example, I went in and I colored each one of these uh, using these outside colors right here. Uh, but let's say, for example, I did not want this object to be so steep. Maybe I wanted it to be a little bit more slight like this. Uh, if you'll notice here on this diagram, it sort of starts off at a very steep angle and then it starts to slowly roll into the center. Uh, each one of these represents a different angle. So let's say I wanted it to be more like this. What I would do is I would take this blue color here and instead of using this outside color, I might use one of these on the inside. Then I would go around on this row right here and I would match each one of the colors to make it isometric all the way around. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to show you guys. You know, there may be times in your design where you want to have an object that is very steep like this, that sticks out very far, and other times where you may not want it to stick out quite as far. And the way that you control that is by going further into the middle of this diagram right here. So the next things I want to talk about in this video are adding additional pieces to your design. 
Uh, to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about, this is my ISO MP9. As you can see, I have these protruding shards that stick out from the sides of the body. And if you look real closely at them, you'll notice that there are these little trench lines that run along the outside of each shard. And the reason I made this decision was because when I uploaded my normal maps the first time, I did not have these, and they just sort of blended into the body. There wasn't a whole lot of separation. Now, as you guys can see here, this would be what my shards would look like uh, without the trench lines around the outside of them. And basically to create those trenches, what I did is I just came in here and I just created an angle. Uh, now, one thing to pay attention to whenever you are adding extra pieces like this is that it can change how this object sits on top of the body. So to give you guys an example, this is my body plane right here. And when I added this little extra piece, what it actually did was raised my body plane up to this level, meaning that this did not stick out nearly as far as it did before. Uh, so that's just one thing to be aware of. You know, when you are adding extra pieces to your design, uh, just know that based on the angles that you add and of course the length of these objects, it can change how this looks inside of your project. The other thing I wanted to talk about was knowing which colors to add to these extra little pieces that you add. Uh, so to give you guys an example, let's say you have a light source that is coming down at a 45 degree angle like this. Uh, this side right here would be represented by this green color right here. Uh, as you can see, this trench on this side is also at this same angle, meaning that it would get the same light source. Uh, and so if I was going to add an extra piece to this side of this object, uh, I'm going to actually use this color right here. Uh, so let's just draw this object out real quick. Now that I have my trench here, I want to go in and I want to add my green color since like I said, this and this would both get the same light source. And Based on this configuration right here, this is exactly how it would look inside of my project. Now, let's say for example, I want this angle to be a little more slight like this. Uh, all I would simply have to do is come to this piece right here and select a color that's a little farther into this diagram like so. Uh, so that's just a couple things I wanted to make you guys aware of. Whenever you are adding extra pieces to an object like this, uh, be aware that it can change the plane upon which it sits, uh, and that can affect how far this piece sticks out from the body of the weapon. One final example that I will give to you guys when talking about adding extra pieces to your objects here uh, let's say, for example, you don't want this to be a pyramid. Maybe you want it to look something a little bit more like this, uh, where it sort of has a flattened out top to it instead of being a perfect pyramid. Uh, the way that you would do this is by simply going down here and drawing a square. Uh, we would take this square and just place it perfectly right here in the middle of our object, and then we would just color it in using this flat color right here in the center. Uh, so by doing so, we have now created this kind of a design. Uh, so you can do a lot of really cool things with normal maps, you know, play around with them, uh, especially when you are hand painting them. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do, a lot of different shapes and designs. Uh, just sort of play around with some of this and come up with some really cool designs of your own. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys in this video is how to create a circular gradient inside of Inkscape. Now, whenever you have a square object like this, obviously it's going to be very easy to select the corresponding colors on this chart here. Uh, however, you may have something in your design like this where you have two different colors and a curve in it and you need a gradient that connects these two together. So real quickly in Inkscape, I'm going to show you guys how you can create a circular gradient. So first and foremost, I'm going to select this circle and I'm going to go to my edit meshes tool. Uh, up here in the top, we want to make sure that this circle is selected. I'm going to do this with one row and eight columns. Now this object right here has 16 columns in it, but you can do eight and it will create the in-between colors that you see on this chart. There's no sense in doing all 16 of them. 
Uh, you can also select more rows. So let's say, for example, uh, you want to create this circular pattern here where it kind of goes inward and flattens out near the top. Uh, you can create more rows up here and you can do something very similar to what we have over here in the diagram. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm only going to be doing one row. So now that I have my edit meshes tool selected, I'm just going to left click and drag through this object. And now, as you can see, I have my eight different points right here. Now we're just going to want to go to each one of these nodes and select the corresponding color over here in our diagram. Now, one thing you may notice about this object is that there is a seam running through it. Uh, this is just something that Inkscape does. So I have a very simple way that you can actually fix this. Uh, I'm going to pull a guideline in here and I'm just going to get this right in the center of this object. I am also going to copy this object and I'm going to paste it. Then once I have that done, I'm just going to draw out a square around half of this object, snapping it to the line. I'm going to select this box, hold down shift and select this circle. Then I'm just going to right click and go to set clip. Then we're just going to flip this horizontally and then we're going to place it on top of our circle right here until it perfectly matches up with the edges. Now that we've done that, we can come to this new side that we created. We can go back to our edit meshes tool and we can just fill in these three colors here. We're going to do the yellow. We're going to do our light pink. And then, of course, we're going to do our dark pink. Now we can just scroll over the top of both of these and we can group them together. And now, as you can see, I have a circular gradient that I can then clip out and use in different parts of my project. And once you get this, there's actually a lot of different things you can do with this. Uh, for example, this is a piece that I built. It is a hex head. As you can see, I've got my circular gradient around the outside. I created a, another circle here that is my flat piece. And then, of course, I created the hexagon shape in the middle using the corresponding colors here on the outside of the circle with the corresponding pieces in the middle. So this is a really cool thing to know how to do. I know that you can do this in other programs as well, uh, but there are going to be times in your design where you're going to need a circular uh, gradient like this, and that is how you would create it inside of Inkscape. So if you guys watched my last video, I talked briefly about how you can merge different parts of different programs together. Uh, basically, that is what I have done here. We've got all of these grip textures that were exported from Blender, and then a lot of these were the ones that I drew out myself. Uh, basically, what I did is I went into 3D Coat, I added all these to a weapon, I exported them into Photoshop and turned off all of the backgrounds. Then once I had done that, I was able to export this as a PNG and then just bring it in here over the top of my other normals. So once you get your normal maps drawn out, that is one method that you can use to add them to your project. So this concludes my video on hand drawing normal maps, and hopefully you guys got some really good information out of this. Now, as always, you can still create normal maps inside of Photoshop and Blender, uh, but by being able to actually do some hand-drawn normal maps too, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So I hope you guys enjoyed this information, and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it on the workshop. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes down below and make sure and leave comments. I'm always glad to answer them. And as always, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because it helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.